everybody. Well, it looks like we are live. Yeah, light's a little reddish. Let's see if I can't improve that just a bit. Got some extra light here. That's kind of on the blue side. Let's see if I can't make it a little better. That's the maximum there. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that's about the best I can do. All right. Ooh, it's looking pretty low resolution on uh, Rumble. Let's see what YouTube looks like. Come on. Let's see. That's jumps alive there. Uh, that little one doesn't look too bad, so it might just be Rumble's having the issue. I apologize for that. Okay, Rumble's looking a little better now. Uh, also, it might be the connection for uh, the receiving end on uh, on my uh, desktop, which is running on a different connection. Hey, Gwen, nice to see you on. All right, so um, got the weight of the bag correctly, um, and or set correctly, and should be good to go. Um, the cell phone is explicitly on its own. Um, no going on Wi-Fi at all, so it should be good. Hey, Equality, nice to see you on. All right, so let's give this a go and see what we can do. Uh, there's a little bit of... Do I have a fan on now? Oh, that's the computer fan. All right. So we're just trying to get the background noise to a minimum. Um, it's cool enough. The AC is off. It's slightly raining on and off where I'm at. And let's move this a little more out of the way and get this so I don't hit the edge of the table. Let's set this up. All right. Get the uh, microphone just a little further away. Sorry if that's uh, making any excessive bonking noises. All right. Um, okay, that shouldn't move around quite so easily. Let's get going. All right, so as I said before, this is a fairly simple braid. So we take from the outside of the bottom, move to the center of the top, outside of the top, and move to the center of the bottom. And we're like eight um, threads on each in each cardinal direction. And... Move to the left and outside on the left and move to the right. And we just keep repeating this until we're done. Admittedly, it is a bit simplistic, but it's a fun pattern to do. I like the way the finished braid looks. Um, in my SCA household, this is, um, we have a subgroup uh, in it called um, Conates. And uh, my conate uses this particular pattern for conate, uh, conate group. So now, admittedly, it's a very common uh, pattern for kumihimo. So I expect other people to be using it in other places. I'm not expecting any type of exclusivity. It's just something that we think is nice for our uh, subgroup there. All right. So, um, hopefully, tomorrow I will be able to pick up my car where it will have the water pump replaced, the timing belt replaced, two serpentine belt replaced, replaced, and two, bleh, two serpentine belts replaced, and one motor mount replaced. And if I'm really lucky, the work will be nice quality. And I'm supposedly getting for all this for about 1500 and it's a 2002 PT Cruiser. So fingers crossed, everything is good quality work, good quality parts, and my car is at least reasonably drivable for the next four to five years until I'm ready to get another one. There we go. I do an occasional like tug at the end just to make sure it's nice and even on the tension. Catch up on the chat. Well, we're still where we were, no boys there. Uh, hopefully, the uh, well, it looks like uh, on the I got the YouTube uh, 
studio up at the same time. And as I said earlier, it's on a different Wi-Fi connection. So presumably you folks are seeing decent quality. I didn't set it for 1080p when I started because I wasn't uh, thinking that far ahead before I hit the uh, go live button. Um, but I think 720p should be okay. This isn't an overly complex braid. Um, so. And it shouldn't be too long before I can bring some around to the uh, top so you can see what the pattern actually looks like. Every uh, complete iteration of the pattern to where it's all black on the top and all red on the bottom of the screen generates two arrows on the pattern. So this one should uh, add length fairly quickly. And uh, as a note of how decadent my uh, camping trip tends to be, where we are um, for dinner tonight, my wife cooked soy ginger chicken, gluten-free soy ginger chicken for um, a friend of ours on our food plan who is gluten sensitive. Um, oops. Oh, that one's there. Okay, yeah, I didn't accidentally pull from the wrong quadrant. There we go. Um, lo mein uh, with uh, noodles, chicken, and broccoli. Um, and forbidden rice. Sorry, just trying to remember all that she had there. Um, let's see. Uh, chanterelle mushrooms that she picked herself from uh, around the campsite. There's a lake here. Um, something else, but I'm not remembering what it was. Um, and. Uh, for dessert, she baked an apple upside down cake because I do not like pineapple. And her apple upside down cake is just fabulous. It was nice and warm. Crisp apples. Well, not too crisp, but uh, ones that haven't been baked into mush. And it's absolutely delicious. And I'd eat more of it, but, but I had eaten enough for dinner. And I don't want to feel uncomfortable. And I am trying to lose weight. So. Yeah, so far, it looks like uh, the resolution's still good. That's a good sign. All right. And though I probably should be doing the uh, little jiggle uh, when I complete the pattern just to kind of even it out. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six arrows so far. So I've gone through six iterations of the pattern. So I probably should uh, unroll the tom a bit. They're kind of getting high. And uh, if, this, uh, if I can keep up the uh, quality of the stream, for, I'm going to probably try to stream for about an hour and a half tonight. Uh, I should get a decent amount of braid made in that time. But um, if I can keep the quality up, I'll probably try another live stream or two this next week, uh, assuming that I'm still able to do that. If the uh, connection to the cell tower just gets so bad that I'm not able to keep a good quality, what I think I'll do is I will record the video to my desktop or to the laptop. Uh, actually, probably should be to the laptop. It's got a better built-in video card. Um, and then I'll try and upload those overnight. Uh, speaking of uploads, I did upload a short uh, yesterday morning of, uh, or no, uh, last night, sorry, of the uh, internals of the attendance counter box thingy that um, I made for uh, the uh, gate uh, for this event. And uh, at least some people seem to have liked it. It got about uh, 1,800 views in less than 24 hours, so... Nice to see that my shorts still occasionally get decent viewing. All right. So at the halfway point when it's uh, 
black down here and red up here, I need to remember to lower the the uh, black ones. And I'm spreading it apart on the sides when I should be doing the top. That's what happens when you get distracted. There we go. And since I already did it on the sides, good news is that my uh, heel is feeling much better. So I'm hopeful. Hopeful the uh, stretching exercises I've been doing are helping with that. For the uh, touch of the surreal, I had an interesting dream last night that I remembered when I woke up. Won't get into all the details, but uh, apparently my subconscious decided that it would be uh, interesting or amusing or whatever. For me to dream about figuring out that a trap um, was not the type of trap that I dreamed it was, but was actually uh, a trap that had uh, Cobalt 60 source in it. And I figured it out because whoever had set it up had written um, electron volt leakage ratings on the front of the uh, device. Don't know why my brain decided to do that, but hey. Sounds like it might be a fun plot if I ever do write a story or two. I don't think it'd be enough for to base a novel off of, but... Uh... Who knows? Of course, the problem with writing is you have to put your butt in the chair and you have to keep writing until uh, you actually wind up with something that's uh, a coherent story. Then you have to edit it, fix your mistakes, make sure that it... Uh, reads uh, in a coherent, free-flowing pattern that makes sense to your readers. And while I think I can develop those skills, I know they take um, a decent amount of work to do it right. Um, for example, I know that uh, I am better at uh, the live, um, live streaming. So I realized as I was saying this that I've got a lot of us in here tonight. I apologize for that. But uh, practice does improve things that you do. So doing this kind of stream of consciousness um, commentary while I'm braiding, I know has gotten a lot better since I started doing it about a year ago. I Actually, I think I have close to 200 plus live streams. Um, not live streams. I might have uh, combined 200 plus videos. I'll have to check the stats. And back to the top again. Getting close to the point I'm going to have to reposition the bag because it's going to hit the bottom of the Maradai and won't be providing tension for the strands anymore. YouTube uh, feed still looks good. I am seriously impressed. I was afraid that it was going to crash and burn in quality fairly quickly. Because I think we're up to about somewhere around 6,000 people on site so far. Which is a little over a third of what we expect uh, before the event's over. And everybody has cell phones these days. But fortunately, infrastructure has also been upgrading. Because I know, like a mere five years ago, I would have never gotten anywhere near the bandwidth necessary to do this stream at that point. And there we go. As you can see, this is definitely a relatively easy, nice, not confusing uh, braid to do. It's one of the first ones I did. I think it was probably about this seventh or eighth braid I did. And uh, I enjoyed doing it. I've probably done eh, maybe eight or 10 of these braids. Like I said, I like the uh, output I get from it. 
it's nice to do in other colors. It's a fun, simple braid to teach people so they can uh, start off and enjoy the hobby and uh, do well at it. Though, admittedly, if you're uh, not used to it, it may be a bit repetitive fairly quickly. But since I do this kind of as a meditative hobby, that actually works well for me. Oh, no worries. Thank you very much for being here. Equality, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm not sure the best way to put it. It doesn't really bother me if people are not active in chat, but when they are, um, it lets me, it gives me a little bit of feedback so I know a little better what I can do to make things nice, enjoyable, fun, answer questions, things like that. But um, since I do enjoy this as just a plain old hobby, uh, even though I'm pretty much doing it all on live streaming these days, I'm more than capable and happy to just keep going with it. But uh, the commentary does... Um, I am really doing the us a lot tonight. I guess I'm more tired than I thought I was. But uh, it's... It can be nice either way. They're just nice in different ways. And I really do appreciate the folks that uh, catch it live. I also appreciate the folks that uh, are on the replay crew. It's you guys that make this channel what it is. If you guys weren't here, I would still be doing this, but I probably wouldn't be doing it live or online. Okay, the bag is touching the bottom pretty much, so let's see if I can't uh, uh, get this uh, method of... Uh... Come on, let's... So I'm just using a pen as a cross piece. That's how big the bag is. Let's use a pen that's a little straighter sided. Okay, so if I remember how this is supposed to go, take it and loop it around like this. And this goes through here. And normally you'd think that you'd feed it through this way, but if I remember right, you feed it through that way. So let's give that a shot, see if I can't make it work. But before I do that real quick, let's give you a quick preview of the braid. So as you can see, we've got uh, alternating red and black arrows here, or chevrons, however you want to look at it that way. And um, it's not so much round as it is... Um, a little bit oval, but, uh, and these are the sides here. They make the uh, red and black lines. And the other side is also red and black arrows. Let's see, give you a better view of it there. Um, this is kind of stiff mainly because um, I didn't have the proper counterweight when I started, but it should even out a little bit. But it's going to be a nice snug braid. Um, that, eh, not sure I really like the way it started off, but it's not too bad at all. Um, I have to think more about a, which is the best way to start this uh, particular braid. Um, yeah, let me think about that some more. But uh, let's see if I can't get this bag to hang properly so that I can easily... Bring the tent, uh, slide the bag up as I need to. All right, bring that through there. And hmm. oh. I think I've got that. Seems to be holding. Tension's good. All right. I think that'll work. 
Let me catch up here. Hi there, Texas Nana. Nice to see you on. And checking YouTube. Yep, still have a good feed on here. All right, let's keep it going. Let's even this up because I kind of moved stuff around a little bit when I was uh, putting the bag up. All right. And there we go. So when I get back from vacation in just under two weeks, I am going to quickly finish up the setup for Rob's braid, which I'm hoping to get uh, a consistent amount of work in on in the next couple of weeks after I get home, make some decent progress with that. Um, one of the things I want to do is I want to um, speed up my uh, braid production speeds um, so I can get more work out. Um, turns out I will not be buying a Mara die uh, this event, which I was planning to, because the person I was going to buy it from uh, didn't bring any this year, which is a little disappointing, but not horrible. But that just means when I get home, I need to uh, make more, uh, make a couple of Mara dies at home myself. Also, one of the uh, people that's camping in my camping group has told me that he wants to buy a Takadai from me, uh, which I'm very pleased to hear. That'll also give me the encouragement to actually start making those again. I have the tools. I have the theoretical time available. I have the knowledge. I just need to get off my rear and do it. Do it, do it, do it. You know you want to do it. But... We'll see how it goes. I've definitely not been keeping up with my uh, watching of YouTube streams while I'm out here, which is understandable. Uh, I interact with a lot more people with the job I do out here than I do on my day job, where um, I tend to be at a computer and not really talking to people as I program. And I'm able to listen to stuff, which helps me pay attention to different things that I'm doing, uh, which means I'm probably going to have some stuff I need to catch up when I get home. Uh, don't know if I'll do that or not. I pretty much decided I'm not going to try and catch up with uh, the Taylor Shipp business trial, even though it's not that long. It's just kind of disturbing. Um, Seem to be, as I understood it, a fairly open and shut case. Um, and the prosecutors don't seem to have done much in the way of unethical things, which is nice. Uh, one of the things about following lawyers and watching trials has led me to understand that some, not all, but a lot more than should, prosecutors seem to just want it for the win and will do whatever they think they need to do to get there, whether it's really ethical or not. So it's nice when they do it. Unfortunately, in a lot of cases, the ones where they are nice, it's kind of an overwhelming case and they don't need to. But since their job is to pursue truth as opposed to just victory, it's disappointing when they just go for the victory. Which I admit is, or the uh, the doing what you should do is how I've been approaching my uh, constable position. I want to uh, do the job correctly, the way it's supposed to be done, ethically, honest, do what's needed to do, be compassionate, um, but follow the law, do what uh, is the right thing to do in that position. Now, admittedly, my job does not require a whole lot of ethical quandaries, um, not a lot of uh, snap decisions. So I do have the advantage there. But hey, if people aren't willing to put in the work to do the jobs that need to be done uh, and do them right, other people will start doing them. Hey, Castro, nice to see you on. Uh, it's good to see you on a uh, live stream. 
Uh, I do see uh, you usually, uh, when I post a stream uh, on Twitter, you like it, which is always appreciated. So, but thank you for coming on live. It's nice to see you here. All right, I need to drop the Tama again. They do climb up quickly. This is also a shorter Marudai than most of the ones I use. It was my, yeah, this was my first actual Marudai and not a disc that I got. Um, it's a bit old. Could probably use a decent sanding job and a little bit of refurbishment. But uh, the legs are also a bit short. I can also fix that if I need to. I've um, got it sitting on the uh, bottom of an upside-down five-gallon Home Depot bucket, which gets it about the right height for me to do, or for to braid with. Yeah. Braid is definitely coming along nicely. Okay. Almost done dropping these down. Just have to remember when I get the black to the bottom, I'll do it on for that portion too. And since I may not be chatting quite as much as normal, let me go ahead and quickly a little bit of background music, but I'll keep the Let's go into space. There we go. Back to comments. There we go. Hey, Kathleen. Nice to see you on. I'm actually uh, live streaming from my uh, Twitter master box at Penzik. Got a braid set up and going. Got about uh, two inches on it so far. Not too bad for about uh, half an hour in. And let's pick up where we left off. I haven't really looked at the uh, class schedule yet. I should do that probably the next day or so. Figure out what classes I can go to. See if I can't talk to uh, the other people teaching or the people teaching Kumihimo classes because I'm not teaching one this year, unfortunately. But I was tentatively planning on it. Uh, I'll have to uh, make sure to get everything set up in advance for next year so I can do a few. But anyway, meet with the uh, people that are doing Kumihimo classes. See if I can't get a little bit of video, maybe some interviews uh, with them as to what got them into Kumihimo, what they like to do, what they don't like to do. Oh, uh, speaking of uh, things for getting into Kumihimo, there is a Kumihimo Facebook group that's just labeled Kumihimo. I have it a link to it in the description on all my videos. Sorry, golf cart went by. Um, and they had a post uh, on July 22nd about, for the people who are experienced in Kumihimo, uh, tell the new people the things that you find uh, most useful and that you wish you would have known early on. And I've been reading through that, and it is a lot of nice advice. So if you do want to do this on your own, uh, that's definitely good for uh, tips and tricks and suggestions. go and uh there we go oh uh kathleen i did see eggle uh, a couple days ago which is how i found out that he did not bring any maradai uh to the war this year so i uh, won't be able to buy one from him but he does seem to be doing reasonably well though he was a passenger on the golf cart so he might be having some mobility issues, but I haven't had a chance to sit down and talk to him, so I really don't know what's going on with him yet. Uh, the lady who merchants with him, I one of the things that kind of got me going is the channel here was to uh, put up a video for her uh, on one of the braids. She was having a little bit of an issue understanding, so I hope that uh, get a chance to talk to her, see if I can't get make sure that uh, 
she is doing well in her braiding journey. The one downside for this braid is you do have to reposition the threads a lot, which is why this is definitely a Maro die as opposed to a disc friendly braid. Um, and if I've recently trimmed my fingernails, it's less than comfortable to do, but uh, I trimmed them about a week before I came out here. So they're not doing too bad. Um, so it's a little bit easier because I've already got the calluses built up a little bit. But doing this braid a lot uh, right after trimming nails uh, a fair amount is not all that comfortable to do, but it will build up your calluses on your fingertips quite quickly. Though that may not be the best thing if you plan on working in silk. Speaking of which, uh, I did see on Reddit um, somebody was starting to work with silk and they were having some issues. So I did try to provide some advice there that I could, which is mainly you having relatively uh, soft slash uncalloused hands helps with that. Um, using a uh, moisturizing cream or softening cream right before uh, working with it is also helpful. And I think the traditional way to... Uh, prepare your hands for uh, handling a lot of silk uh, without snagging it is to uh, kind of rub your hands with sugar and honey or sugar and something else. I forget. <sighs> yeah, sorry, yawn there, um, which is one of the traditional ways of uh, preparing your hands for that. But again, I'm going from memory, so please do not trust me. I would definitely engage a uh, Google search or something like that prior to taking that advice. Oh, let me catch up here. All right, thank you. And thank you. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I uh, took my wake up pill about nine o'clock this morning. Since it's past seven, it's actually about eight now. I am definitely no longer receiving benefit from that, which means I'm getting on the sleepy side. I could have a little bit more caffeine. I have it right behind me if I need it in a refrigerator. Yes, I have refrigerators while I camp. I am horribly decadent. Uh, not sure I want to do that though, because it's getting relatively close to when I'm going to go to sleep. And one of the annoying things when camping is waking up at like 4 a.m. and needing to uh, make a quick run to the uh, porta potty down the road. Uh, have to toss something on that's uh, won't freak out people as you run down the road, run down the road, and run back to bed, get in, put the covers on, and get warm again. The uh, that's one thing I might do. Um, do a video tour of our camping setup, uh, maybe like a minute or two. We have a nice gear or yurt. Um, that I mostly built myself. I did buy the canvas for it pre-done. Um, it's 14 foot in diameter. We have a roughly queen size uh, bed that I built, um, kind of half-assed out of lumber um, that is collapsible. It serves our purpose, so it's not too bad. Um, we do have an air mattress with a futon on top because one of the things we found is that sleeping on an air mattress uh, outside when it's cold outside, uh, the air mattress sucks all the heat out of you. So having a futon on top of it tends to not have that problem. So just glanced over the chat. If the that would be great is the video tour, I will definitely have to do it then. 
since most people have these wonderful supercomputer audiovisual studio recording setups in their pockets these days. I think I can do one more round before I need to uh, raise the uh, bag up again. That hanging nut type setup with the pin, with the, uh, not pin, but uh, some sort of bar um, rod or type thing uh, mixed in seems to work really well for keeping that bag supported. Didn't really think it would work that well when I first tried it, but I've been pleasantly surprised by that, making sure that I actually get it set up right the first time, because if I don't, it just keeps sliding down. But when I do get it set up right, it does work nicely. Um, also, uh, a friend of mine who comes to this event makes chain mail and they've been, uh, he has a, uh, uh, some type of shear slash saw mechanism he uses to cut the links, uh, out of a coiled wire and it uses a, uh, stick a rod of wax to uh, lubricate the cutting mechanism and they've had problems making uh, or using some sort of mold for uh, making the wax rods uh, apparently the way that's been semi-reasonable for them is making paper tubes and then filling the tubes with the wax and uh, peeling the paper off of it to uh, get the finished product but I think I can actually fairly easily machine them uh, a uh, six or eight or even ten uh, chamber mold out of like high density polyethylene. Um, my work tends to have a fair amount of scrap for that. We do try and recycle it, but it's been a while since we've got anybody that'll take the uh, high density polyethylene from us. So I figure I can take a portion of that that's going to be scrapped anyway and make a two-part mold out of that that will solve that problem. He also uses a uh, piece of uh, like four by eight. It's about two feet long and has two um, like three and a half inch diameter hemis hemispheres uh, cut into it for putting links in and making stuff that he would like to be able to make more of those. And I can easily do those with my uh, CNC router at home. So I'm going to try and make him a few of those as well. So I've got plenty of projects to do when I get home from here. And uh, as you can see, I can keep doing this braid fairly quickly while talking without having problems keeping track of where I am. Uh, it's actually kind of, I've done it enough times that once I get going, it's kind of almost an autopilot. So I'm pretty sure I can get this braid done uh, before I leave. I'm hoping I'll be able to live stream all of it, but uh, if I can't, I can transport it uh, relatively easy. If it falls over, gets kind of tangled up, I've untangled it like that before. I will definitely have to do that then uh, for you, Texas Nana and Kathleen. I will post it to the channel. Uh, it'll be a uh, video as opposed to a live stream. And, uh, yeah, it's, I, I camp way too often doing stuff like that. It sucks. And, uh, once my wife pointed out that putting a small, you know, thin futon on top makes it so much better. I will not go back to just camping on an air mattress if I can all avoid it. Air mattress in a house, not bad. Air mattress outdoors, you need a barrier of some type. All right. I think I'm at the point where I need to drop the tama again. Oh, bag's at the bottom. Just barely uh, doing that. Let's raise it up and give it a little squeeze here. And yes, it is holding. And eh, I think I got something close to roughly five inches of braid so far. All right. Let's just go ahead and... Uh, I'm all these time a little bit. I should be able to get somewhere around six to eight feet of uh, 
braid out of this easily, maybe a bit more. I started with uh, eight meters. So four meters length, lose about 40% of that. So 2.8 meters, so maybe uh, eight or nine feet would be my guesstimate. Sinuses are a little congested. The uh, newest thing I picked up an allergy to um, in the last year or so is outdoor molds. And since it's been raining on and off, I'm not surprised that there are some growing out here. Uh, since we are in western Pennsylvania, not too far away from uh, Lake Erie, it can be relatively humid. And... Uh, Sorry about the golf cart there. Um, so I'm, sinuses are probably responding a little bit to that. So I will probably mute real quick so I don't blow out your guys' ears and I'll be able to talk a little quicker. Give me just a second. And I'm back. And hopefully sounding a little less congested. Okay. So, we went left and right last, so we go to the top and then the bottom. There we go. And to the left. To the right. A little snug, though it's not exactly required. A little bit of jiggle wouldn't hurt. This braid, um, with a little bit of uh, moving it around, maybe washing it once or twice, the tension evens out very nicely with this. This isn't really one you have to be overly careful on the tensioning. I think I am going to succumb and get a little bit of caffeine in just a moment. Yeah, to the left, to the right. Top, bottom, and left, and right. All right, time to unroll these like I did the others. Got to mute here real quick. That was my wife. She just came in to let me know that uh, we have actual work work to do. Not a whole lot, but she needed to get some information here and find out what orders need to be placed for tomorrow. Breakfast of Champions. Let me catch up on the chat. Oh yeah, that would... I'm not, there we go. There we go. That would be bad. Okay. Yep. There we go. Sorry, the laptop's a little touchy on the touchpad tonight. All right. That's out of the way here. And back to the braiding. Braiding, braiding, braiding. I really should not use that tune that much. I don't think I'm going to get copyright struck because I'm such a horrible singer, but... Found out apparently one of the um, frantics who does the uh, uh, 
Taekwon Leap and Boot to the oh, Boot to the Head Taekwon, Taekwon Leap, uh, Last Will and Temperament, and Roman Numerals, and actually no, they, I don't think they do the um, uh, Human Race that I can kind of semi repeat. Uh, anyway, the uh, person in that frantics group that does those um, was on Critical Drinker a while back, so apparently he has a YouTube presence. So I will definitely have to be careful not to uh, extend too far into their uh, copyright out of fair use. Though I do definitely enjoy their work as a comedy group when they were active. Hey, what are we going to learn to beat people up? Excuse me? You are Ed Grooperman. Ed Grooperman. All right, I'm going to mute again real quick. I am so sorry. I forgot I hadn't turned the microphone back on. I apologize. Um, getting distracted or I just didn't tap it hard enough. There we go. Bag was sliding down just a little bit. Had to pull it back up. Well, it may not have been sliding down until I touched it. Don't mess with it. You'll break it. No, my folks did not say that to me as a kid a lot. My mom was actually very calm, patient, and wonderful mother. She would uh, explain to us kids uh, why we needed to do something and then expected us to uh, live up to that expectation. Disappointing her is like kicking puppies. And it's not because she weaponizes her niceness. She's just a nice person. And I consider myself very fortunate that she's my mom. Yeah, there we go. 
we are back to our starting position. And we immediately go back into the next move. Well, speed still looks like it's working okay. I might still go ahead and just do some video because I can do it during the day and pause it as needed uh, and then upload it at night because I do want to uh, hopefully get this parade done before the end of the event, which my end date for this event, even though it runs till the 13th of August, I believe, will probably head home the 12th just because I found that uh, despite the fact when I was a younger participant in this hobby that uh, I would stay at events till like I was the very almost the very last person to leave because I enjoyed the event so much. Uh, now for this particular event when I'm here for roughly three weeks and the thought of heading home Sunday morning, getting home, unpacking just what we need to crash in our own beds and then uh, get up the next morning early to go to work, as opposed to heading out Saturday morning, getting home Saturday afternoon, just kind of bringing in the absolute minimum of what we need to, for when we wake up in the morning, taking a nice relaxing sleep till we're slept out, wake up, get the rest of the stuff in the house that needs to be in the house and start putting away the other stuff where it needs to go until next year or the next big event we go to. And then uh, getting another good night's sleep and going to work the next uh, Monday morning is so much more attractive. I can definitely tell I'm getting older. Speaking of which, in 31 days, I will hit the double nickel. Which means I'm actually probably about a decade away from retirement. Which is approaching way, way too fast. I gotta start worrying about things like getting set up for Medicare and make sure I have enough in my uh, retirement fund. Have long term health plans in place. Make sure will's up to date. I need to get my will, my wife and I's wills done. Sure we have good proper beneficiaries unfortunately since my wife and i do not have any kids between the two of us or together uh, we don't have any children that we need to worry about or that will keep us company as we get older we do have uh, extended families that are fairly close so there is that There we go. We're looking pretty good here. And I seem to have cut way back on the ums, which is nice. It's one of those things where you don't do it, and then you think about it, and you keep doing it because you can't stop thinking about it. But my roommate and my wife have both told me that they hear me when I'm streaming, and that I've gotten a lot better about it over the since I've started streaming. Used to be when I would record something there'd be ums and ahs and errs and pauses and... you don't need to fill every available second with noise or some type of sound even doing the kind of stream of consciousness conversation here i'm doing you can have pauses you don't have to absolutely fill every available millisecond with some form of sound. Though I do have the background music going on, so I suppose I can't really claim that in all honesty. Hey, we're up to seven people. That's not too bad for a uh, camping live stream. That might go to hell in a handbasket any second. Well, we're almost about an hour in. So I'll probably run anywhere from 10 to 40 more minutes of braiding. Hoping pretty soon I'll be able to bring the braid around to the top when I uh, raise up the bag. 
and you'll be able to see the pattern some bit a little bit better all right time for a soda break Ah, much better. It's easier to talk when your throat's not dry. And I think I can go one more iteration before I need to uh, add moisture on the can. So now my fingers want to stick to everything. I was thinking I can go one more iteration of the pattern before I need to start rolling the tama out more again. One of the uh, campmates I was talking to over dinner tonight said I should start streaming on Twitch as well. Haven't really streamed on Twitch before. Probably should look at the uh, terms of service and rules for there. I do have a Twitch account. Uh, I understand that I can't be a Twitch partner if I want to simul stream to Twitch and other places. So I don't know if I'll be live streaming there much or if I'll uh, like, uh, maybe stream there and then, um, upload them as finished products on YouTube and rumble. I just, I'm not sure the best way to deal with that. Like I said, I'll have to read it. I know, uh, Rick, Rick Nikita. No, he's a, a member of the chat. Nick Nikita, uh, does Twitch streaming. I do do occasional video game playing. Might be worth it to do it for that as well, so I can justify playing more video games. But I doubt I'll ever be a famous um, video game Twitch streamer, mainly because I'm kind of a completionist when I play video games. I like to do all the side quests and max up as much as possible as I'm going along, and I'm afraid I'm going to miss parts of the game. But uh, eh, maybe there are people who like that. I don't know. I also tend to look at guides for the game so that I know that I'm kind of playing in the right areas, not getting distracted or lost in dead ends. All right, almost ready to roll the Tama down. Just need to do the left and right. And there we go. Okay. Let's roll these Tama down. Speaking of uh, the down in a phrase, um, Larry Korea has a anthology uh, in his uh, noir. Um, anthology series um, basically he's the main editor and there's another another person who does a lot of the editing with him the uh, first of the anthologies is more fatale which focuses on the uh, femme fatale of uh, the more genre the second one is no game for old knights which deals with the uh, hard-boiled detective character. And the third one is Down These Mean Streets, which deals with the city as the uh, character-slash-setting uh, persona of, uh, you know, the hard-boiled detective stories. So. Uh, I don't know if... Uh, Twitch streaming won't be fun. I'm just, I have to do some research into it to decide if it's a good choice for me, and if so, what I'll need to do to be able to do it well. If 
phone's buzzing. Let's see what's going on there real quick. See if it's an emergency or just... Yeah, one of the random alerts that you get for having a phone. Nope, looks like it was just a random alert. Probably telling me that my YouTube stream is live because it does that. Let's see if I can't. Shift positions have been sitting in this chair most of the day for like the past week, and it's starting to get a little uncomfortable long term. Um, that's not that comfortable. Let's try the wraparound method. At least it gets me a little closer to the Maradai. We're still relatively centered. There we go. Hmm. Maybe the problem I got too much light. Now that's even worse. Okay. All right. So, yeah, let's go ahead and raise up the. Uh, braid a little bit, or the weight bag a bit. See if I can get the uh, braid around the top. Almost. Getting closer. Considering this uh, Maru die is at least an inch and a half thick top to bottom. That's an inch and a half since I last uh, tried. Another nice thing about this braid is it's not one that tends to wind up with uh, you getting out of position easily some of the other ones. Uh, the movements are consistent and keep it reasonably centered. Yeah, there we go. And to the left, to the right. Need a bit of a tug, not necessary though. And to the top and to the bottom. And to the left. And to the right. And to the top. And to the bottom. To the left. And to the right. So I don't think I'll do a... Well, let me rephrase that. I will look and see if Ian is going to do a stream tomorrow night. I know he's been traveling in England. Uh, he went to Captain Corey's funeral. Um, it doesn't look like he's going to do a stream. I might try and do a stream tomorrow night. I'll have to think about it. Uh but it does look like I'm able to keep a nice uh, stream going. Uh, might try and see if I can do it at 1080p instead of 720p for the resolution. Uh, and this is not going to work for my heel with the Achilles tendonitis. That was going to be really painful really quick. Which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Just lets me know I need to do more stretching exercises. Go. And to the top. To the bottom. To the left. Oops, those are a little close together. And to the right. Tug, a little bit of wiggle in the center. That's still, that's nice, even tension on that. That's looking really nice. I will definitely uh, take another picture for the next uh, thumbnail, uh, the next stream, so you can get a better picture. Up, actually, what I can do is I'll take a nice, high quality picture and I will put it up uh, on the uh, community tab so you folks can see what the braid is looking like. You know, a fair amount of detail. Of 
for those of you that play Pokemon Go in this last week, I have gotten two shiny Squirtles and two shiny Poliwhirls or Poly whatever. The uh, tadpole Pokemon. So that's been nice. Where I work is right next to a uh, Pokestop gym and an ingress portal. So it's easy to uh, make my daily ingress uh, hacks and my uh, Pokemon spins. Let's see if I can do a decent speed burst here. Run top speed for this braid. Where I am currently. This is a little challenge for myself. Not bad. And let's keep going. There we go. Rushing, rushing, rushing. Keep that rolling, rushing. Top. And bottom. Yeah, I think I'm starting to get a bit sleepy, so I'm going to probably start to wrap up this stream just a little bit early. Probably an hour and 15 minutes. That gives me about another eight minutes. Could do another a couple iterations of the braid. Hopefully have enough to actually bring around to show at the top. But definitely making decent progress on this one. easy to talk as I go along with this. And it's having a conversation with somebody who doesn't really watch YouTube, Twitch, or Rumble, doesn't really have a good idea of the current meta. And he was talking about when I was saying that people have found my uh, voice soothing I'm doing live streams that I should probably list it as like ASMR. I said, my only problem with that is I refuse to lick microphones. Yes, I know ASMR doesn't ever have to include licking microphones. That's just the way a lot of uh, streamers tend to do it when they say they're doing ASMR because it's actually... Let's do a titillation stream. And I don't think I'm ever going to qualify for titillating anybody other than potentially my wife. Because she is in love with me, I am in love with her, and we both view each other through that lens. I'm not a horrible monster, I just, I'm kind of average. Making good progress here. Uh, I missed that part. I'm not making the connection. I'm sorry. As far as Ringo's still playing, which? Um, oh, yes, I finally made it. I apologize. Uh, John Ringo playing Pokemon Go. Took me a minute. I'm a bit slow. I'm a bit tired tonight. I apologize. Uh, I don't know if he's playing it or not. Um, I haven't really seen much activity from his Facebook page in about two, maybe th three years. Um, I know he's still writing. I don't know if he's been producing a lot, but I haven't really purchased or read uh, much new stuff from him since he did the uh, Monster Hunter Memoirs trilogy with uh, Chad uh, Oliver Chadwick Gardinier. That was by Chad or Iron Hand, the most unreliable of unreliable narrators. Yeah. 
And... Yeah, I didn't really play Pokemon Go for a year or two. I was playing the uh, Harry Potter in addition to Ingress of the Niantic games. And then they closed down uh, Potter. I wasn't really playing Pokemon Go for a while after that, almost a year. But I started picking it up again recently. I do kind of go to the same places since I do the Ingress stuff. So... I can do an ingress thing and then flip over to Pokemon Go and then head on to my next thing I'm doing. I have it up uh, in the car when I'm driving so I can pick up resources and whatnot as it's going. Record uh, walking and things like that. All right, I am just having a real hard time keeping my eyes open. So this is probably a reasonably good spot to stop. And let's see if I can't bring the uh, braid up and around. Got to be careful when I uh, try and slide it up. It's easier to knock it to where it drops down. All right, there we go. So this is one side of the braid. And this is the other side of the braid. And along the edge, you can see... It's essentially a red side with black arrows and a black side with red arrows. You can use whatever colors you want. Oh, excuse me. You can do it as a three color or a four color. You can have all arrows all the way around if you'd like. Um, so it's fairly uh, logical when you want to uh, uh, do your design um, once you know what it is. And like I said, there's these four, one, two, three, four lines on each arrow. Because I'm doing eight, I get one, two, three, four before it changes to the other uh, side of it. Um, actually, one, two, three, four, then it flips to the red, one, two, three, four. So if I was doing 24 instead of 32, I would only have three lines per arrow. Uh, if I did um, 16, I would have two lines, and it would be kind of... Uh, more of a blended look. And if I did eight, I think you can do it with eight. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure how well that will look, but it, you'll essentially have only one line arrows. Yeah, it'll be kind of a, more of a weave look than anything else. So does anybody um, Need anything else before I head out? If not, I will go ahead and uh, wrap up for tonight. Uh, probably try a stream tomorrow night. If Ian is not streaming, he may be streaming. Uh, I'm not sure when he's getting back uh, from England, if he's going to be up for stuff like that. But it looks like he's been having a semi-enjoyable time, uh, though he apparently is a bit under the weather currently. I'm hoping it's feeling better. But, yeah, we got, I'd say... Almost a foot of braid done tonight in just about an hour and 15 minutes. So not bad at all. I had about maybe an inch done when I started. So this is definitely a fairly quick braid and I'm hoping to make decent progress on it. So thanks everybody. Uh, and as always, stay safe and happy braiding.